Hello, I'm Len Hen. Thank you for joining me. I call this exercise Chinny and the River. It's a scene of Mount Chincogan and the Brunswick River. We'll start by painting the sky, then the clouds, the background mountains, foreground mountains, then the background trees, and the water with reflections, then we'll put in the banks, and then we'll finish off with the big gum trees in the foreground. The colours we use are white, that's titanium white if you're painting in oils, cobalt blue, Prussian blue, phthalo blue, crimson, warm red, warm yellow, raw sienna, burnt sienna, burnt umber, and viridian green. You use whatever brushes you wish. I use a two inch house painting brush, a one inch house painting brush, a size 12 flat hog bristle brush, a size 12 round hog bristle brush, a small fan brush, and a selection of small soft haired brushes for little twigs. I also use a cranked painting knife. You may paint in oils or acrylic. You can paint wet on wet, or you can wait for your paint to dry during different stages. Well, we're ready to paint our Mount Chincogan in the Brunswick River. I have here my canvas. It's a piece of artist quality canvas stuck to masonite with PVA glue. Size is 32 inches by 18 inches. And I have my palette up here so it's easy to show you what's going on. I use a chopping board for a palette rather than a normal palette. Also down here I have another palette with plenty of white on. Here we have phthalo blue, cobalt blue, raw sienna, crimson and of course the white. If you're working in oils it'll be titanium white. Now this is my acrylic paint thinned out with water and a little bit of acrylic retarder which stops the paint from drying so far. So let's see how that goes today. I've had a bit of a problem with my acrylic paint drying fast on these big paintings, on the smaller paintings it's not so much of a problem but on a big painting like this it becomes a problem and I'll pick up a little bit of phthalo blue and start in the corner, right in the corner and as I'm painting the undercoat for the sky on it'll give me a light blue undercoat I do want to have a very dark blue later so we'll work across with a light blue and blend the paints together as we go make sure you cover every bit of your board, it's a bit hard to come back later and touch it up bit of blue, bit of white. I must say the paint goes on a lot easier when you thin it and spread it out even across the top of the sky. A bit more white right in the corner, crisscross brush stroke and then spread it out. Now we'll add more blue to the corner. I'd like a very dark sky, one of these very blue skies and then we'll have some storm clouds coming up some beautiful white storm clouds happening. So put plenty of blue, there's very strong colour of the phthalo blue, but we can use plenty of it in the corner there. Crisscross, crisscross. And then add plenty of white underneath. No, nope, not blue enough. Add some more blue. And the same thing across the other side. I can clean my brush here, get some of the paint off it, the white in there, and rub it right into the canvas. Make sure it goes right into the canvas. And because we're having a lot of clouds here, we don't have to blend the sky so well. You might want to use a smaller brush. You might be working on smaller paintings. Use a smaller brush. I'm using a two inch brush. And I clean my brush regularly. Keep your brush clean. Give this corner a bit of a squirt with water and then I want to put more blue in there that's more like it now that works okay a bit of a squirt of water and then the blue paint over the top of the other they're still mixing together so slowly add your blue to your sky make sure you get every bit of it done and then we can work across here of course if you're working oils you won't have to squirt it like that And then I can clean my brush down here because I know we're going to have water down here and it's a good idea to clean your brush down there with long brush strokes because I know that's going to be water. Now we'll put another colour up here, a little tint of burnt sienna also. And then with my painting knife we'll mix a colour, it'll be the grey in the clouds. A little bit of cobalt blue, 
not much crimson, just a little tiny bit of crimson. It'll turn it into a purple and a little tiny bit of raw sienna. Don't mix your colours completely. Leave this marble effect. Then with a round hog bristle brush, I'll dirty it in the grey paint. Just get a little bit of grey on it. Like that. And if it's too dirty, just give it a bit of a clean. Just so it's saturated in the grey paint. And then on the side of your brush, pick up a bit of white on one side. On one side only. Now the middle of painting's about there. I want to be a little bit to the side of the middle. Uh, just so the cloud's not right in the middle, because this cloud, I want it to be very dramatic. So to start the cloud, I want it about there, not in the middle, about there. So the best way to start is put a mark on your painting, and that's where the cloud will start. And we want big, big, multi cumulus cloud, like that. Round and round. This time I'll put a little bit more dark on my brush, just a little bit, and the white. There, that dark's coming off a bit better now. There, that's how we start with our clouds. Round and round and round. And here you can unload your brush like that. Take your hair out. Now on the top of the cloud, I like to have a glow. So a little bit of burnt sienna in there. Not, not raw sienna, burnt sienna. Just a little tiny bit in there will give us a glow. That's a little bit too much. You've only just got to see this colour. Turn my brush in the dark again. Get up the bright. And I'll put a glow on the top of the cloud there. I should have done this first, but it doesn't matter. That's better. Here. He's gone. And again. They're going to go through the top of the board. That doesn't matter. Maybe they should. So that's our cloud brush stroke. Maybe here. And a big golden glow in this cloud here. Round and round and round. You can follow my brush strokes here, but you won't get it exactly the same. Now I want to spread out a little bit now, so I'll clean my brush here. My acrylic paint has dried. If you're working in oils, yours will still be wet. And I've loaded the brush with dark and light again. brush again. Not quite what I want. That's more like it. Now I'm using the softer paint which I've thinned out. And a few clouds underneath. Now they need to go under that cloud. So we'll brush over the top of that one. We'd better finish this side off here. That looks like that. It's a very blue sky today. A little white. And blend them together. There's not much colour in those clouds. I'll put a little bit of grey in the bottom there. Not much. And I'll blend it with a bit of white. And maybe a grey tone here too. So we need the contrast between the light and the dark. The grey and the white. And then a bit of contrast here too. You know, it's still not what I want. I want those great big ones like this. So I've picked up the burnt sienna and white mixed together here. That's more like it. And the big one. So you can practice your clouds until you get them right. Then put them on your painting. You don't have to practice them on the painting. You can practice them on a practice board if you wish. I'll put a bit more paint down there. And in the bottom of the sky, we can have it a, a glow with the raw sienna. That's the raw sienna that time, and a little bit of crimson. And then over the top again, white, and it will glow through the white. And I've lost a little bit of blue there, so I'll put it back in. That's a bit too much. And blend them together. 
together. So we've got all these tones. We've got the raw sienna into the crimson and into the blue. Now I need to finish the sky from the distance here. Horizontal brush strokes and clean your brush here. Mine's got a little bit of blue on, which is good. That's what we want. And I'll come in here and put that tint of raw sienna underneath and a small tint of crimson slightly above it and then go over with the white paint. Now that white had a little bit of burnt sienna in it. That's okay. And blend up towards the clouds. And you can paint it like this. Now everything you can repair, especially on a sky, Skies are all different. We're not doing a portrait of a sky, so it doesn't matter what it looks like. As long as it's from light to dark. Now up on my sky here, I have a little bit of a problem with my paint. There's all different colours, so let's have a little fluffy cloud in the distance here. So I've loaded the brush with dark on one side and light on the other. A little distant cloud here. It's a long way away, so don't detail it too much. And from a distance that should look okay. So I'll keep working to finish this one off. A little bit dark there, that's okay. Nothing exciting over here. This is the edge of the board. We don't want anything happening there. The dry brush is best, but I'll clean my brush and I'll clean it down here also. Just move your clouds a little bit. As long as the streaks are all in one direction, it's okay. Clean your brush each time after each run over. Now it has left them a little bit streaky. It takes your sky back, gives you better perspective, and it makes it look like it's moving. Give it a little bit of weather. And of course, if you want some rain, put a bit of rain in like this. Just a bit of blue on the brush there was there. Ooh, it's really raining there now. 